And we are officially live with Miss Tierney Jordan. How are you? How are you? I am great. How about you? Man, I'm doing great. So uh, you're holding it down in, in Texas, right? I am. What part of Texas are you in? I'm in the Dallas, Fort Worth area. Nice. So Man if I say Mansfield, you probably don't know where that is. But well, I actually do. I'm from Texas. So I know oh, that area really okay. well. Yeah, I um, I grew up in Texas. I lived in Austin for nine years, and then um, I lived in the Dallas Fort Worth area for about seven years. So okay, all my, all my I went to school all in Texas except for college. Awesome. So let's get off of me and get on to you because you're what it's all about today. I'm super excited to kind of dig into um, you know what you're doing right now to crush it in real estate. The title of the show is How to Make a Million Dollars in Real Estate, and um, you are the perfect person to uh, to be able to tell that story today. But before we do that, let's dig into your background. I want to get to know a little bit about you um, so we can set the stage to tell that story. Okay. Um, so I worked for a mortgage company. Um, that was really my first job. And I did that. And I stayed with that company from 1998 to 2005. Um, I did, I was a loan originator, loan processing. Um, I worked in the IT department. I did business. Um, I, I was a business analyst. I also did project management for them. So I kind of did a lot. I also um, built websites for them too. So that's kind of where the internet stuff mm -hmm. started for me. Um, my degree is management information systems. Um, so I know a little bit about technical stuff, yeah. um, just enough to kind of leverage it out and understand what's going on a little bit behind the scenes. Um, so I did that and I started flipping properties with um, a friend of mine who was a loan officer and we had an investment group called Metropolitan Investment Group mm -hmm. um, and then decided, <clears throat> so after doing some investments, I decided that I wanted to get on this side of real estate, so get my license. So I got my real estate license in 2006 and ended up getting my broker's license in 2008. Um, and just off to the races from there, I've had my own broker brokerage um, company and pretty much just been on this side of things, building um, my team. Cause it's still kind of like a brokerage, but yeah. I'm like a brokerage within a brokerage. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit about my background. So tell me, tell me this, and, and, and by the way, that's really interesting because in in, in most cases it's the other way around. It's mo most most <coughs> real estate agents they end up building a real estate business, and then as a byproduct they get into investing. Whereas mm -hmm. you did the opposite. You got into the investment side of it, and then realized, hey, I want to build a residential real estate team. Um, but I'm curious because you mentioned, you know, in your background that you were in the mortgage industry, which is real estate related, obviously. And I'm curious, what was it that what did you learn in that industry or when did you when did it start to? Well, here, this is a two prong question. What did you learn in 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 mortgages in doing mortgages um, that is still serving you now today? Um, I learned about the process. So I understand like how um, if you have internal underwriting, how that benefits the process. Um, I understand how long it takes to do things. I understand the whole flow of a loan. Um, I didn't really work. I understand the appraisal side too. Um, I didn't really work with realtors directly a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in the on the loan side of things, um, because processors pretty much like handle a lot of the legwork um, of the the loan. I don't know if you're frozen or is. Oh, okay. There you yeah, go. I'm, here. I'm, here. <laughs> I'm like, I can, just, I, I, can, I can pull you. I can just stand really still, and you okay. think I'm frozen. So. Um, yeah, I didn't really have a. I didn't do a lot of 
interactions with realtors then. And um, when I was in it, it was more of like a refi boom mm -hmm. too. Um, so I think it's more so just understanding the whole process knowing how things work um understanding the appraisal side of things yeah. too and then I, I i spent a lot of time in the it department so i built websites so the first websites i built were loan officer websites for that mortgage mm -hmm. company yeah um so that kind of serves me because i do a lot of internet marketing now um so I guess that's kind of what I took from that piece right. of things. So Tierney, at what point then did you, um, you were doing mortgages and you were obviously heavily involved in, in, in that part of the business. You were building websites. When did it click for you though? Obviously you started flipping properties. So the, it, it, it sounds like the, the evolution of your, of your path has been mortgages, investment, and then residential real estate, you've obviously, you're, it, it doesn't sound like you're doing mortgages anymore. And, and that could be a conflict of interest, obviously, with the real estate side of your business, just depending on what state you live in. Are you still doing the investment side of the real estate as well? Yeah, yeah, I still do the investment side. And I, I didn't spend a lot of time as an originator. Um, I really got my loan officer license after I got my real estate license. So when I worked for the mortgage company, I went from doing like processing and that side of it to the IT department. Okay. So when I ended up getting my real estate license, um, I got my loan officer license because I couldn't find a good lender to service yeah. my clients the way I wanted to. So I'm like, I'm just going to get my license. But I didn't do a whole bunch, you know, on that side of things. Okay. So here's what I want to know. I want to know. I want to know what clicked with you. What happened to you um, to say, you know what? I, I want to. I want to go. I want to build a real estate team. Um, well, I, uh, well, first of all, did you get into real? Did you get your real estate license with the intent of building a real estate team? This is no. Okay, I didn't. I got my license for two reasons. One. Um, I was looking at the commissions that I was paying out as an investor to real estate agents. Adam so Bailey said, pull your camera down, Tierney. He said, pull it down. Pull it down. Like hey, that. Good looking that out. Better? Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There, you go. there you go. Sorry about that. I interrupted um, you. Go ahead. Yeah, so I got it because um, one, the commissions, right, going out to the real estate agents, and I was right. an investor. And then two, I really felt like there was opportunity because I didn't think a lot of agents were educating the clients well. And um, when I got my license in 2006, the market crashed shortly thereafter. Yeah. So there were, you know, there were, I felt like I could help the industry more too. Yeah. Yeah. From so an education perspective. So when you got in, when you got into real estate, so you, you were doing investments and then you thought, uh, you know, I, I, I want to get into real estate and I, I want to actually sell properties. Like I want to, I want to list and sell homes. And, and, and then there's, so these, there are these, there are these evolutions in, in business, right? So then you were the single agent operator, right? And you were, you're working with buyers and sellers and you're kind of wearing all the hats. And then, you know, at some point something happens again, right? Because it's this natural evolution where you, 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 you learn about teams and then that becomes appealing to you and then you start building a team. So tell me how that transition was actually made. So <clears throat> I started doing REOs um, and that was my bread and butter for quite some time. So it was just myself. And then... Um, I was with a brokerage that had the relationships with the asset management company. So I didn't have the direct relationship at the time. So when that brokerage decided they didn't want to have an internal brokerage anymore, they were going to outsource everything. They just got rid of that internal brokerage. Hence all of my um, listings that I had were just gone, dried up that quick. Um, so I decided I'm going to build an internet based business. This was like around 2011. Mm. Um, I'm going to start marketing online. I'm going to get my own leads. I'm not going to have to worry about anybody else and my business drying up. 
right? So once I started building that piece, I ended up having way more business than I could handle. Um, so Which is not I, a problem, by the way. That's never yeah, a problem. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I just didn't have the capacity to service everything that we built. Um, and when I say we, I hired a marketing person. Okay. So it was myself and a marketing person. Um, and ended up just getting Boomtown, um, that platform in 2011. I hired seven agents. Wow. Um, that were all seasoned because at the time I'm like, I just want to give people leads. Yeah. And I want to give people leads who know how to work them. Right. So I'm like, if I hire seasoned agents who know what they're doing, they can bring their book of business with them too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can give them some business as well. Um, so I think it was more just out of necessity. I wasn't thinking I'm going to have this brokerage and then I'm going to build this team. I really didn't go into it like that. It was just more out of necessity. Yeah. Yeah. So you scale pretty quickly and, um, you know, obviously you're learning a lot along the way. Um, so what was it for you? Like when you, like when you really started to scale your business and you, you know, you started to think to yourself, wow, this could really be fun, right? I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm providing leads, I'm providing value, uh, people are buying in. What was it that, that, kind of, that kind of kept you raising your ceiling? Like how did you continue to, to, to keep your drive and, 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 and shoot for the stars? I just, I'm, I'm a growth oriented person. So I'm never settled, I'm never, happy. It goes both ways. I'm never happy with where I'm at in terms, I'm like, I can always do more. I can always yeah. do better than I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, so that's how I think when I process things, I'm not thinking about today. I'm thinking about the future. So okay. I'm already working on next year's stuff. Like right yeah. now, as we speak, I'm not, you know, I do the things that I have to do day to day. Um, but I'm always thinking about what's next. Okay. So let, let, let's dig in, man, to the title, really. You know, the title is How to Make a Million Bucks in Real Estate. And I, I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, you have your, your real estate team is not your only line in the water. In other words, you're generating multiple streams of income. But um, is, the, is the real estate team right now for you, your kind of bread and butter? Yes. Okay. And so you're a $40 million a year producer, um, which is puts you in the top 1% of all agents in the United States. Um, what are you, what, what, where are you winning at right now in your, in your real estate business? Like, what are you, what are you really crushing it in? Um, the internet lead generation, um, and within that really building a seller platform. So okay. we have sellers coming to our site registering. Um, right. we really don't drive buyer traffic. It comes organically sure. um, through the sellers. So that I would say that's where we're killing it at and have been for quite some time. Okay. So, and, and by the way, I mean, most people think about internet leads, they think about buyer leads, right? And I, I know that, you know, if, if anybody here who's read the, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, they know you have to list to last, right? It's listing mm -hmm. uh, leads leverage. And, and so I, I'm curious, how do you, what is your, as much as you're willing to share, what is your online lead generation seller strategy? Like, how are you getting so many seller leads? Um, we're just, we're putting um, information out there that drives sellers to your site. So okay. um, it could be like getting their property evaluation, right. um, just different things, but that's like a common one. You know, you put out there, your landing page for them to give their information um, in exchange for us giving them the value of their property. Right. So, you know, what would you say is 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 online leads? Would you say I'm sorry? What percentage of your business would you say is is online leads? Um, about fifty percent, because we get past okay. clients and we also get referrals. But it all started with the internet stuff. Okay. Jen so, and Brad Salter are asking a question. Do you use KV Core? I don't um, because I've had Boomtown 
uh, since 2011. Okay. And when I came to EXP, it, it was very tempting to just pay the, I don't know if it's $50 a month or whatever that fee is for the technology. Um, it was very tempting to not have the Boomtown expense, but I have so many leads and it just would have been a nightmare trying to migrate them over. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't use it. And what we're the same way, by the way, we use Commission Zinc and we had 20, I want to say we had 23,000 leads in our database, which would have just been a logistical nightmare. So we did stay with Commission Zinc. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so you're using Boomtown um, in, in, as a CRM. Is that is that where your most of your agents are operating from the Boomtown platform as well? Yes. Okay. All right. And and so you guys are, you're, you have these seller lead registrations. They're coming in. And do you do you disperse those amongst your agents? Do you have an ISA team? How do you how how are you having those leads contacted within the first five minutes? So my agents are there. Um, I've done ISAs. I've done virtual ISAs. I've done in office ISAs. I've done train your new agents as an ISA. You know, um, and it doesn't work, does it? None of it works. Well, Adam <laughs> Bailey will probably say um, differently because he's one who has mastered that piece of it. Um, for me, I guess I just never wanted to put in the effort that I needed to put in to get the ISAs up to where they needed to be yeah. um, to convert. So I'd rather just train the agents. Um, so the agents are doing that. So they're required to come into the office if they haven't met their minimum standard to be on the team, which is two transactions a month. Um, mm -hmm. And then most of them still come in anyway, even when they hit their numbers. Okay. How so long are they in the office? So from eight to 11 or 12. Okay. Which is fair. I mean, that's fair. So you've got, you've got people signing up. you obviously have buyer leads as well, but you're also generating a ton of seller leads. Um, and you've got you've got agents. You're, these are being dispersed out to the agents. They're calling them hopefully within the first five minutes. Um, are you are, are your agents? Are they just? I, it sounds like you, you're letting them play both roles. In other words, yep. they can list and they can sell, right? Why did you Why did you choose to not go the buyer agent route? Um, I give people opportunity you know so i i never wanted to be like are you asking why didn't i be a virus agent or why don't i no, no, have because, virus agents on the yeah, team because, you know you're and, and by the way we did this too and i can i can share my answer with you as well um but you know in in traditional models most of most people have a a buyer agent and a listing agent right and then right. and then a showing agent or something something like that, um, but you decided just to, you're, you've are you you've hired agents and you're giving them the opportunity to do both, right? Right, yeah, I don't like putting people in a box, you know, so now they have to prove themselves in order to earn the opportunity to yeah. get this seller lead, you know, platform. Um, but once they do that, then it's on them. You know, I don't, I don't wanna put somebody in a box and say, oh, you have to be a buyer's agent. You know, right. so that's okay. really why I don't want to limit people. And and Terry, what are you doing for like accountability? Like you've got all these different leads coming in right now, uh, which I mean, it is is I'm, I'm sure a little chaotic in that you know. Well, you're creating all these opportunities. You've got a, a huge team. How are you? How are you? How are you holding each one of these agents accountable to making sure not only do they follow up within the first five minutes, but they continue to follow up after that. Um, I have auditors that audit our pipeline, so I can see if they're not being followed up with, um, and if if our process isn't followed, um, then people are taken out of the system. Okay, is this something? I, you know, it's so funny because we think like with the ISAs, and I shouldn't have said it doesn't work because the reality of it is. If you if you if you hold that system accountable, you can make it work. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also there's a huge you know there's a huge time investment there, and and I'm not sure that I would argue against you know the way you've done it, which is teaching your people to fish, right? Instead of having you know having the fishing done for them and then just giving them appointments, 
Um, I'm sure you know you can make an argument for both cases, but I've actually done it the way you have. So you know you with 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 the way your business is set up, essentially it's you at the top, and then you just have real estate agents, right? You don't have buying and listing agents. You're just giving them the opportunity to do everything, and then you're putting in a you're adding in a layer of accountability. And and so I'm sure what you've noticed is right. The people that follow your system are the people that have the most success. And mm -hmm. then the people that follow it, you know, to 75 percent, they have a little success. And then the people that don't follow it at all, they don't have uh, they have very little or no success at all. Correct. Yeah. And I look at it like I'm in I'm in partnership with these people. You know, we're business partners and my role in that partnership is I've created the systems, you know, I create the systems, I provide the leads, you know, I'm the rainmaker in the, in the business relationship. Um, so I don't look at it like I'm at the top, you know, of everyone, but it's just business partners and um, I'm a systems oriented person, you know? Um, so that's what I'm good at. And that's where I like to play around is creating the systems um and working with people who want to work within that system yeah. that makes sense yeah makes perfect sense. so are you still going on appointments or are you just operations now <clears throat> i do i'm not really operations either um i have an operations guy um that we share in our network okay. um so i i'll go on appointments really just to stay up to date with what's going on in the the market because I teach, I coach, I train, you know, so I want to make sure that what I'm saying is, you know, like I said, I'm always thinking ahead. So we're you always trying to stay relevant. Yeah. Trying to stay relevant. Yeah. yeah, definitely staying relevant. So are you doing one on ones with your agents? Um, I don't do one on ones. Is it group coaching? Mm hmm. OK. And, yeah. and, and so how do you come up with the material for, for each one of those sessions? Um, it just depends what's needed, you know? Um, so we, we've been digging into the disc like the last couple of weeks, um, in our sales meeting, because a lot of times people don't know how to build rapport and, um, you know, they could be in there making calls all day, but if you can't connect with people and you don't know how to, um, identify somebody's disc, you know, and match them uh, and and get them to open up, then you'll struggle, you know, same thing with a face to face. Um, so we've been digging into that. So it really just depends on what I see is needed. I have a whole database of training material that they have access to. So I have videos on pricing, you know, listing presentation, me making live calls. So there, a lot of it is just a system that I've developed um, and it's already there, it's already yeah. built. So um, what, what do you think is the biggest challenge for you in your business today? Um, I would say the biggest challenge is uh, maybe retention um because i give people so much and teach so much i don't hold anything back yeah um people leave you know because i yeah. can make you a rock star real quick like in a year i can take you from nothing to making over a hundred thousand dollars in a year you know um so w being at exp though that's not a problem anymore because they leave they're still you know in the network and still earning revenue share off of that. Yeah. So it's a challenge. Retention is a challenge when you're running a team, especially when you give people everything and you're not limiting them. You know, uh, I think a lot of times, um, you know, when you look at the MREA book, for example, it talks about you being like you holding the listings. Don't give those listings up or have one listing partner you know, because you're giving away control. When you allow people to do listings, you're teaching them a skill that could allow them to just go do it on their own if they choose to. Um, yeah. But I, I, I come from a place of, I, I, I'm a big believer and you get back whatever you put in, 
you know, yeah. so I, I always believe that I'm going to have what I need um, and some because you always get back more than you put in. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm a I'm a big believer in that. And I've it, it's always come to pass that way, too. So how are you? How are you? Finding talent? How am I what? How are you finding talent right now? Um, through other talented people. Okay. So, um, it's really through others. I, I have a lot of people reach out to me. Um, and I don't hire everybody, of course. Um, I like to kind of get references and I do that really through the people that I know. Um, so like one of the agents on my team, he's brought in a lot of agents, um, to the team. Yeah. So I think it's more so just through other talent. Yeah. And what's, what's cool about what you just said is the fact that, you know, once, once you have been a team leader for a little while is you, you really start to paint a picture of what the prototypical agent looks like, right. That you want in your, that you want in, in, in your, in your environment. And so now you, oftentimes you can take a meeting and know like within the first five or 10 minutes, whether that mm -hmm. person would be a fit. Do you, you find that that's true? Yeah. Very quickly. Okay. All right. So, you know, obviously your residential real estate team is, 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 is performing at a high level. You're a $40 million a year producer. What else are you doing in real estate to earn income? Um, I have rental properties. Um, I haven't bought any commercial, but that's coming. Okay. Um, I'm earning uh, revenue share, you know, um, through What's that? <laughs> so um, I'm earning passive income through the people that I've signed up and those the people that they've signed up, you know, seven levels deep from every person um, that I sign up. And I've signed up 40 something people. Um, those 40 something people have signed up like 150 or so um, yeah. in the last year. So um, that passive, so we get a percentage of every deal that seven levels deep since I'm completely unlocked on all levels. Um, and it's very significant. Um, it's very significant. So, yeah, so let's talk about that, Jenny, because like, where, where, first of all, where were you before you came to EXP? I was with KW. Okay, so was I. Um, and so talk, walk me through like how you heard about EXP and then, and then what it took for you to make the transition. So um, Adam Bailey, uh, we became friends because I was paying him for coaching. Um, and we ended up just becoming friends. And he shared with me when we spoke on the phone one time that he was thinking about buying out of his brokerage to go over to EXP. And I thought he was like having an early midlife crisis um, because his company was very successful, right? He had ownership in a brokerage. They were ranked in the top nine to 12 in the nation, right? Um, they had started expanding into other markets. So I'm like, why would you do that? You know? And he was like, I just, cause him and I had talked about being in partnership um, but we couldn't figure out how to make it work within the structures that we were involved in. You know, I was at KW, he had his own independent brokerage. It really just didn't make sense, you know? So he was yeah. like, you know, what we've talked about in terms of com coming together, building a business together, like we could totally do that there. And I'm just kind of like, like, I didn't see it, right? But I didn't really know. Two weeks after that conversation, one of the top teams at the market center that I was at, and we were number one in profitability in the mm -hmm. nation, mm -hmm. um, that KW that I was at, and we had about 800 um, agents at that office. So the number one person there um, announces, and he had been there, I, I don't even know how long he was there, to be honest with you. I know he had ownership in that market center and he was there for a long time, okay? He announces he's leaving to go to EXP. So I'm like, okay, Adam says it. No, he's leaving. I need to at least look into this opportunity and yeah. see why, 
you know, what's why are these people that run really strong businesses going over to EXP? So Adam got me on the phone with Brent Gove. Brent invited me to Mexico um, because they had like a leadership thing going on there. So I went to Mexico, um, met Jean Frederick and sat on the beach with Jean for about five hours. And I was at, I was at KW for um, four years, almost five. And I never heard of Jean Frederick when I was there. And Jean was one of the first 10 agents in Texas with KW yeah. and owned six market centers um, plus a region. And I sat down with him because I was at this time, I was still with KW when I went to Mexico. Right. Mm -hmm. So I sat down with Gene on the beach for five hours in a cabana, him, me, my husband. And we were just asking him like tons of questions that we had about EXP. And what stood out to me is I asked him, I'm like, why did you why would you sell six market centers? He was in retirement. You know, yeah, that was yeah. doing well because I knew the market centers that he owned and the region. Why would you sell all that? And you're with the number one real estate company, according to agent count in the world, you know, to go over to EXP. And he was like, well, I said to myself and he well, what he said to his wife was, honey, if you owned a whole bunch of blockbusters and you knew Netflix was coming, what would you do? And she was like, I would sell all my blockbusters. And he's like, that's what I did, Tierney. And so, and then he broke down the model where I truly understood it, like the revenue sharing um, piece, the stock opportunity. And after sitting down with him, the light bulb went off. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. The front row seat to Gene Frederick, man. Um, so obviously you were, you probably at that point were like, you know, uh, at this point, you, you couldn't put holes in it and you couldn't figure out a reason why to do it. So what happens next after that, Tierney? So after that, <clears throat> came back and um, let the OP know, or the owner, um, that I was leaving. And um, How was that conversation, by the way? <laughs> of course, he didn't want me to leave. Yeah. Um, but it didn't make sense. Like, even the stuff that was presented um, to me... Um, you know, if, even I'll say this, if somebody agreed to say, Tierney, I'll give you a million dollars a year extra yeah. to stay, I wouldn't stay. Because when you look at the opportunity, I'll make more than that in three years, you know, passively. Yeah. Right. So um, in terms of like, when you look at the projection and the opportunity, because here at EXP, you're actually, you have ownership in a national company. Yeah. You know? So like the growth that I've seen and the opportunity to partner with more agents, um, help more people, I would have never been able to do that in a different model. It's yeah. just not yeah. built that way, right? Um, so so it's, it's been awesome for me. Tini, I'm, I'm like, I'm curious, like you're just, you're crushing it in real estate. You're, you're, you're obviously crushing it at EXP. Um, why do you think, why do you think people decide to stay at a traditional brokerage? Um, or is it maybe, or, or maybe do you think that maybe just that enough people don't know about EXP? What do you think it is that, and, and we're growing at a rate of, I think a hundred agents every week right now, but there are some people that decide not to come over to EXP and maybe we don't want them. Um, but why would somebody decide not to come here? Um, there's a couple of things. So one, they really don't know what EXP is all about. Right. Yeah. So, cause I talked to a lot of people and they've had it explained to them, but it really didn't click. Like with me, it clicked when I sat down with Jean, you know? Um, so they really don't understand the opportunity or two, it's because they don't have an ownership type mentality, right? Yeah. So this company is for owners. This company is for business. And I'm not dogging anybody else, right? I'm not saying if you don't come to EXP that, that you're not great. 
Yeah. It could be great, but but this is not easy. Okay. What I've built for the passive income, that doesn't come easy. Just yeah. like building your real estate business doesn't come easy. So some people don't want to go through what it takes to build passive income because it's not going to just happen like that. Or some people, um, because really when you come over, you have to be excited about the opportunity of revenue share, you know, and that means you're going to not recruit, but you're going to share the opportunity. I don't like saying recruiting because it's not like I'm excited to tell other people that you can have ownership. You can make passive income. You can make money beyond what your two hands can do. Right. Yep. So I'm excited about that. I share it with people. I'm proactive in that. I'm purposeful in it. Right. Everybody doesn't have it within them to, to build that pillar of income and keep their real estate business going. Yeah. Right. You know so I think it's, it's either ignorance or they just don't want to, to do that piece of it. And what's so cool about you, man, is I can hear how passionate you actually are about EXP and, and like you and me, we, we both share that passion because we understand that, you know, as real estate agents, we've never had the option like we do at EXP to be a stock, both a stockholder and then earn revenue share. You know, when I was at Keller Williams or, or, or I was at a, at a mom and pop uh, Iron Gate um, before that, but it was always about the next transaction and it was always yeah. going to be that way. It was yeah. always going to be about the next. I was only as good as my next transaction. There was That's never it. an option for any passive income. And listen, for, for UKW folks, I get it, right? You're going to say profit share. And, and here's what I would say to that. Profit share was great for those people that got in early, right? We know those people and they're earning, you know, really good money. But I can tell you from my standpoint, the biggest profit share check I ever got was in June of 2017. It was $368. My third month at EXP, my revenue share check was over $3,700 that month. My third month at EXP. So I hope you understand that, you know, I love all my KW folks. But listen, at the end of the day, it's about you. You are the you are the you are the gas that makes that engine run. And I would ask you, do you want to sell real estate for the rest of your life? Is that what you want? And if the answer is yeah, that's cool. Here's what I would say to that though. Why not sell real estate and earn passive income and be an owner in the company, right? Why not sell real estate and have all those things? knowing that you're not only as good as your next transaction, right? And I'm I, like, I'm passionate about it like you, Tierney, because it literally is changing agents' lives. Wouldn't you agree Absolutely. with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I'll be, I'll be interested to see where this whole thing goes. And like, I love being in business with people like you um, because, you know, you get it. And I hope that you and I can continue to add value into agents' lives, not only locally where we're at, but across the country and maybe even around the world. Absolutely. So what's the future hold for you? Um, so I am going to continue to help develop other agents. You know, um, I want us to win on a high level. Um, and I think collaboration is where I tell people all the time. I've never seen the culture I've never seen the collaboration. I've never seen agents helping other agents the way I have here at EXP. And it comes down to the revenue share because we're all building together and we're building our company together too because we're all stock owners. We own 40% of the company, you know, the agents do. Um, so it creates a different culture that I've never seen, which is needed for our industry because a lot of people out there would think consumers that they don't need a realtor. You start listening to these commercials and part of it is because we've done a poor job. You know, there's a small percentage of, of realtors that do the majority of the business that needs to change. We need to get more people out there bringing value so that 
technology and disruptors can't provide the value that we're not giving, right, as a whole. So my future um, holds myself continuing to educate others and passing knowledge down so and sharing my information, sharing everything that I've done so that people can do the same thing, right? Um, I'm also building passive income. Um, I'm getting into the commercial side. I started doing a little bit more luxury. So I'm, I'm challenging myself to do things because I like to build systems around those things and share them with the people that I'm in business with. Um, so I'm creating other pillars um, of business and sharing everything that I know with the people around me. That's what you do, right? You're a creator, man, and you always will be. And that that's that's um, you know, that's what makes me excited to be in business with people like you. Um, so I'm I'm curious to that guy or gal who is out there watching us right now or will listen to this in the future, and you know, they are they are curious about EXP uh, or maybe want to learn more about EXP or or any one of the other many pillars of your business, right? How do they connect with you? Um, just send me either a direct message through Facebook or I'm on Instagram too. So you can send me a message through there. Um, I pretty much check it at least once a day. Um, so, and I'll respond that way. Tierney, thank you so much for jumping on with me here this afternoon. Um, definitely drop some value to our audience. I look forward, hopefully, to seeing you in Orlando in June. Yeah. And yeah. Um, if I can ever do anything to be um, uh, of service to you, please let me know. And I will. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good one. All right, Tierney.